We've been talking frequencies and vibrations this whole time, my naga. We just been speaking on vibrations and frequencies this whole time. I mean, when you think of the drop, of the drip that drops, frequency, vibration, has to be the first thing to come into mind. I mean, we're always just surfing the wave. We're always just on the ether bus. You know what I'm saying? Welcome back. I know it's been a minute since we made that pit stop. Peace to the tribe. Peace to the tribes. Shalom. Ahab. To all the cons, you know what I'm saying? We're just talking frequency. Frequency and vibration. All right? (laughs) And, you know, I came from. It feels oh so good, right? Oh so good. To see the wave manifesting in real time at such a uh, natural rate supernatural rate rate that is you know we're just talking about supreme vision that is dragonfly perspective we've always been talking about frequency Shabbat alright so I hope you're comfortable If not, go ahead and get ready because we're preparing for another one. Yes, yes. Because we're still just talking frequency. Peace to the loved ones. Let's go. So see... We've been talking frequency, we've been talking vibration. And along with that frequency and vibration comes resonance. And I know this drop, this drip drop, I know this cooking we've been doing in the kitchen very, very well. I'm oh so familiar with it. So when I see it, in real time I can't help but resonate with it I know that we were uh, looking for a little bit more from the house of dragons most death shout out to I'm right there with you <laughs> all in all though I think This was the drop we were waiting on. See, I've been digging on this power of the rings. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's been an ether ride thus far. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking top tier ether squad material. (laughs) Aha to the loved ones. You know, we in good rhythm, we in great vibrations. We're tuning up the frequency that is above the nine. Hala hawa. And, um, you know, digging in this drop, I happen to notice a few things, you know. They open up the scene with a creator like Bean or Beans. <laughs> Impacting so-called Middle Earth by way of uh, song. It is this certain music that is being produced. And through the music, you have what can be considered what we refer to biblically as fallen angels, so to speak that make their way to Middle Earth. 
by way of Dracon, that is Cometa. And the impact from these beams is pretty uh, an enormous one. And we go ahead and, um, and take notice on just how powerful this impact is. It, it reminds me a lot of the man who fell to earth. And we're going to go ahead and dig a little bit on it. Peace, peace. So here we have the impact of this same fallen entity, the same fallen being. And look at the devastation this being has caused so it gives us a great sense of familiarity with the whole fallen angel idea ordeal in which uh, the way our scripts tell us right and building with this magnificent vibe I'm just in the wow because to understand where this being came from is to understand that it was through the music, through the song, he was able to enter Middle Earth. All right. We're going to go ahead and continue to dig. So as you can see, this being fell in the image of a man. All right. And this man happens to awaken after his fall and begins to interact with his environment around him and it just so happens to be another being was here to witness his landing his his falling to earth which is why I said in the opening that this reminded me of the man who fell to earth a lot of that's going on right about now if you're surfing the wave, right? These shows are getting more and more intense with such, you know, information. But as you know, we've always been talking about frequencies. We've, we've always been talking about your Dracons, your Cometas, your Presters. All right, so according to the story, the source of what would be considered a creator like being uses the music to send you know powerful entities in you know in their favor in his favor to establish certain effects on middle earth all right and you should already know right now the earth is your turf and while you know we on the Oh, while we're on the topic, <laughs> you know, that reminds me of the kind, man, you know, happy belated Earth Day, your turf day to the kind, you know what I'm saying? It's real out here in the field, and the Dracons definitely have to keep each other charged up. So, Shalom to the cons, we're just building on this so said meteor man. <laughs> From this uh, Power of Ring series I've been building on. Alright. And as we see. He fell. True impact. Right. Creating the flames and the devastation. From his landing. As. A so called man. In so called man form. Okay, we're just digging back to the correlation. We're talking tales from your script. Hey, hop to the real ones. It's just another marvelous flow because you are the marvel, my naga. You are the marvel. So, as we're digging on this, we see that the impact. Everyone was able to take notice of. All right, we're talking Drake Cons. So 
searing through the sky, all right? Evident to the visible eye. Folks were able to bear witness to him entering. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get into some dry into some things and as we do you know we're just letting this sit in alright because I know this house of dragons wasn't <laughs> it wasn't what it's supposed to be at least not to me you know but I think this was the job we was waiting on so peace, peace. We're gonna continue this marvelous build for the real ones. That is the Shabbat time. Aha to the Trizad. All right. So here we're gonna see just how you know quite effective his impact was. As we can see, right. He reaches up. They're freaked out because they just watched this comment, right? <laughs> fall, you know, fall to the earth. And there is this strange man that comes out of it, right? And you can see everything surrounding him, the elements and the source, right? And he brought forth this fire type devastation with his fallen. We're going to get a little more as we carry on. Peace, peace. So as we said, he fell in the image of a man, right? Or man-like. And here you see just the, 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 the pureness and energy that they're trying to correlate, right? Because like we said, we always have been talking frequency and vibration. And when you begin to mend the two, combine the two, you get energy and the fluctuation thereof. Right, so we see just the impact, right? Bang. I'm talking crash landing. <laughs> Dodge all hijacks at all costs. All right. And with him doing so, Right, he's not only inspiring fear, but he himself is totally unaware of the situation at hand. It's almost as if he's forgotten. All right, let me see what's going on. So he falls into what we would refer to as the fallen angel category from our scripts. Right, and as we're digging on this, we see how basically everyone's using your script, right, to create all of these stories, and they're basing it off you, my naga, without a shadow of a doubt. They're basing this off you. I mean, we're talking about your story. Right now, as we're building, you know, I'm just showing the you know correlation as to how he he got here, right? Because this is giving me vibes of the man who fell to earth. So he shoots across the sky, bang. 
right? Now you see these creatures, these man-like creatures. Which is why I say we can't make this stuff up. We've been we've been speaking on the same drop since the beginning. Since the beginning of the flow. And now to see it in such a show from the standpoint of a con it, 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 it captures my attention right it makes one wonder you know so we're peeping the scene. We're seeing what's before us. <laughs> and it sounds and looks mighty familiar. So like I said, when one has been with the frequency and vibration for so long, one recognizes it immediately for the pure water that it is. Because that's what it is at the end of the day, that primary men. Ahab, to everyone that's been trying to keep me uplifted and stable, <laughs> we're shaking off the turbulence. We're back to flight school. That is the ether buzz. You know, we're just on another ride of the naturalist. Supernaturalist 2.0 to be exact. That is the fifth wave. So, um, it looks like we got what we needed out of that drop. And now you're kind of set right where we need you to be for this thing to develop and kick off. So, a hi to the real ones. We're going to continue. Peace, peace. So as we were building, right, we was talking about the music and how the music was bringing forth creation in various ways. And a part of that creation through the music was the falling of this being who, who fell from the sky in man form, right? And here we have this great reminder DNA not only reacts to but can be repaired with certain frequencies this is why music is good medicine you know what I'm saying we're, we're talking about frequency and vibration which provides a healing when applied properly you know what I mean we're all meant to crystallize but it's amazing how they're involving the drop to such a pure degree we're talking about frequencies right and the fact that music is the frequency that brought this so-called meteor man now you know my version of meteor man was a bit different <laughs> and shouts out to all the real ones that know you know my version of meteor man you know came from robert townsend this meteor man is a bit different but I guess it's a similar frequency. We'll see. We have to investigate before we attach. Nonetheless, um, <laughs> it's quite the wave to surf. And since, you know, we've been doing this, it's always been about the frequency, about the charge. Because when you combine frequency and in, uh, vibration, you get energy. Nine being the stabilizer. All right. It's a beautiful flow when you apply it to that around you. Now, notice how they're talking about physical angles. This also can be referred to as physical angels. Angles of light, angels of light. Right? We're talking foundation. We're talking science. 
We're talking mathematics, history, all in one. We're talking about vibration. And when we're directing our vibration, it can help you ascend with, you know, on your essential rise. This is how you release the Dracon energy, that which is within you. Some call it the Kundalini flow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Talking Shakina, Dracon energy, right? The connecting lines of one five seven two two seven eight four and four eight one five form an inner triangle within vertices six three and nine. This leads us into dimensions and the altering of such, right? Because a dimension has a lot to do with your perception. Con, con. So, you know, after digging on this, I came to the realization on, on just what could be a prominent reason why pyramidal structures was, was such a thing to the ancients. They weren't necessarily built, but thought into existence and to form matter from finite energy with everlasting rock. And that everlasting rock is the name of our creator that is our framer and shaper to have the faith the know the know to have the know of your creator you know because when we're digging on the things that makes us marvelous it has to go back to the credit of something of someone <laughs> you know a greater light a greater Wata, that is your mama. You know, so hey, how to the real ones on such a beautiful bill. Because we're just talking about all the autogenous ones. And yes, you can be melanated in autogenous. Just like how there are many plants and trees across the plane of the magnetic earth. So is it for people? And when we jump outside the box of categories and labels, we can see division like blades of grass. The only thing is, is that we are the blades of grass across the land. We are the salt of the earth, Shabbata. All right. Autogenous. Not just indigenous. Because the indigenous is what specifies us, right? Specifically. But what we have in common is the autogenous field. That which makes us indigenous across the plane. Aha. All right. And it's in this realization, you begin to see the science in such a respect for the frequency, which ultimately leads back to the creator anyway, especially when you dodging hijacks at all costs. We're talking about an appreciation, a form of gratitude, not just renovation. reverence we're not just speaking on worship but an actual expression taking something that is from within and bringing it without on the outside that is the truest form of manifestation 
And with that being said, it is known that the first great American civilization was that of the Omex of Mexico from 1200 BC. They developed a highly organized society centered on a spectacular sites built for religious ceremonies at San Lorenzo and La Venta. Olmec people sculpted huge monuments in stone and portable figurines in jade. Many Olmec achievements benefited later American societies earning Olmec culture the name Mother Culture as the culture that you know built us all and with that being said you know special a to the boat to the bro trader Wakanda for motivating us once again to tap back into that flow to keep that primary mem which is that Wata aka that Maya flowing you know a hop to the real ones, man, to the ones that really dig in this search, not just for the sake of numbers and likes and hearts, but for the sake of the magnetization, the build, the source, the true core of what it is that we do. Those that get to drop and drop whenever they feel like it. <laughs> Peace to the real ones. It's all a hop. Here we have an article digging on the magnetite biomineralization in the human brain. All right, let's dig on it. Magnetite. Although the mineral magnetite is precipitated biochemically by bacteria, protists, and a variety of animals, it has not been documented previously in human tissue. Using ultra sensitive superconducting mag a, magno um, <laughs> a magnemonitor, or I don't know, however that would be, <laughs> a magnometer in a clean lab environment, we have detected the presence of ferromagnetic material in a variety of tissues from the human brain. Magnetic particles extracts from solubilized brain tissues examined with high resolution transmission electron microscopy electron diffraction and elemental analysis identify minerals in the magnetite magamite family with many of the crystal morphologies and structures resembling resembling strongly those precipitated by Mag, mag, magnetotactic bacteria and fish. These magnetic and high resolution transmission electron microscopy measurements imply the presence of a minimum of 5 million single domain crystals per gram for most tissues in the brain, 100 million crystals per gram for Pia and Dura. Magnetic property data indicates the crystals are in clumps of between 50 and 100 particles. Biogenic magnetite in the human brain may account for high field saturation effects observed in the T1 and T2 values of magnetic resonance imaging and perhaps for a variety of biological effects of low frequency magnetic fields. It's a beautiful flow we're talking about, right? We're talking about the realization of this magnetite, which allows you to interact with magnetic fields saturated in your tissue. We're talking about the brain, right? Of the cerebral. They said they didn't even know before that this existed in the human brain all right now you're wondering maybe where am I getting at well we've been building on vibration and frequencies and when we were digging on the beginning of this post we started out 
with a so-called pyramid, right? Which was just three angles of light, all right? That is the try in it, the three angles of light. We're talking balance to the nine, nine being a stabilizer. But when you look at the Omex, they specifically were very known for crafting headgear to such detailed formation. And that is what I'm focusing on. All right. Just what did the Omex possess? What did the Omex know when it came to magnetization? Again, Aha to the bro, to the family, that is trade the Wakanda for sparking such a marvelous flow, right? So we're talking about a hundred million single domain crystals per gram in the tissues of the human brain that allows access to the magnetic particles and the magnetic fields. All right. This is going to get interesting, especially as we continue to build. We're dealing with the pineal gland having a magno sensitivity to static magnetic fields as a consequence of induced electric currents. So if carbon, aka melanin, is what regulates electrical currents as we'll see in a bit imagine the pineal gland and it having the capability to perceive magnetic structures all right during the past decade a number of reports indicated that the mammalian pineal gland is magnosensitive in terms of spatial orientation this indication is based on observations that artificial alterations of the direction of the earth's magnetic field markedly decrease the gland's capability to synthesize melatonin and we already know melatonin is the this, this synthetic form of melanin, right? These findings, however, seem paradoxical since animals as well as humans experience such alterations whenever they turn their heads. Therefore, the potential of the pineal gland for sensing magnetic fields was reinvestigated. During the dark phase, rats were exposed to repeatedly inverted NMFs magnetic fields generated by two identical pairs of Helmholtz coils, one pair connected to a power supply automatically, the other pair manually using integrated partitioner meter. Only the pineals of the animals exposed to the automatically activated field responded with a reduced activity of the rate limiting enzyme serotonin whatever that would be <laughs> lower melatonin levels and increases in serotonin and five hydro in endo acetic as as acetic acid hence magnetic field exposure itself did not affect the pineal rather induced eddy currents in the animals resulting from rapid on slash off transients of the artificially applied magnetic fields are most likely the explanation so we're talking about a switch right your pineal gland has a capability of receiving the energy from a magnetic field and transferring it into use And this is what we're digging on, right? Which is why I asked, what did the Omex know? What did they have on their mind, bone? 
You know, what was they cooking with? So this is just what we're pondering as we continue this build. Focusing on the pineal gland and its sensitivity to magnetic fields and magnetite biomineralization in the human brain. All right. So we're going to continue with the flow. Here we have three brain boosting powers of hematite. All right. When you feel foggy, unfocused, or distracted, it's time to get grounded. Hematite is a perfect stone to bust your brain fog because its energy is both calming and activating. Plus, the silvery black color provides a visual message to your brain to get back to the present moment while the stone's cool temperature and heavy weight are a tactical or tactile reminder to be grounded in the moment. Here are the three ways hematite can boost your brain power. Clarity. This power stone is great for tuning into your intuition and getting clear on how to move forward. When you want to trust your gut and have a strong connection to your next steps, use hematite. Number two is grounding. When you are scattered and unable to get your thoughts or emotions under control, hematite can help ground them. This stone is an iron oxide compound that brings your energy back down to earth. Number three, focus. Hematite can be a powerful activator of your energy when you need to stay on track with a project or plan. The stone brings a gentle flow to your overall energetic pathways you're, so you're not all over the place. All right. So, um... I like this little article because it's real simple and straight to the point when dealing with the effects of hematite and how it can boost the brain. You know, so keep this in mind as we continue to cook up in the kitchen because we're building on the pineal gland. All right. And we're digging on magnetite. We're also building on OMAG. A hop to the bro. Moving forward. When we're digging on the hematite, right? It says that it is a common iron oxide compound found with the formula Fe2O3 and is widely found in rocks and soils. Hematite is also a crystal. And it belongs to the rhombohedral lattice system, which is designated to the alpha polymorph of Fe2O3. All right, it has the same crystal structure as corundum and ilmenite. Ilmen All right, it naturally occurs in black to steel or silver gray brown to reddish brown or red colors it is mined as an important ore mineral of iron all right so digging in the 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 power of rings the dwarf realized he stumbled across uh <laughs> an ore aka crystal that may be life-changing and completely beneficial to his people All right. So we're still talking crystallizations. And we're seeing how this hematite. In the etymology. Right. It is used as a pigment. And it means the blood red stone. This hematite. All right. Hem 
hematite is also strong with magnetism. And we'll see in a bit. All right. And we'll see in a bit. So carrying on. We're digging on magnetite once again, right? We're back to magnetite. Magnetite is also a mineral. It is also a crystal, all right? It says that with the exception of extremely rare native iron deposits, it is the most magnetic of all naturally occurring minerals in the earth. Naturally magnetized pieces of magnetite called lodestones will attract small pieces of iron, which is how ancient peoples first discovered the property of magnetism. Go figure. But this article was telling us that we have magnetite in the human brain. So if we're talking about magnetism and magnetite being the strongest of all naturally occurring minerals on earth what does that let you know about your brain what were the omex really telling us about the brain <laughs> yeah 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 we'll we'll get to it because again we're just talking energy frequency vibration magnetite is black or brownish black with a metallic luster and it leaves a black streak all right magnetite is a crystal all right It says magnetite has been important in understanding the conditions under which rocks form. Magnetite reacts with oxygen to produce hematite and the mineral pair forms a buffer that can control how oxidizing its environment is the oxygen fugacity. This buffer is known as the hematite magnetite or HM buffer. All right. I mean, let's dig on it. Magnetite reacts with oxygen to produce hematite. So hematite comes from magnetite. And you have both crystals in the brain. All right. <laughs> Dig on this. It says magnetite can also be found in fossils due to biomineralization and are referred to as magneto fossils. There are also instances of magnetite with origins in space coming from meteorites. You see, and we were digging on this so-called man who fell to earth, this so-called meteor man. Right? This so-called meteor man. The one that fell. So we're still digging on the same thing, but we can see it from our ancestors' perspective. That is a dragonfly perspective. We're just building. We're talking magnetite. Right. So seeing how hematite is produced from magnetite lets us know a little bit more. All right.
Here it says several species of bird are known to incorporate magnetite crystals in the upper beak for magnet for magneto reception. All right. Reception, which in conjunction with cryptochromes in the retina gives them the ability to sense the direction, polarity and magnitude of the ambient magnetic fields. You can do this in your pineal gland. right <laughs> it's a wonderful flow it's always a beautiful flow when we're building on the wonders of Hawa which is you Shabbata what did the Omex really know right says living organism organ living organisms can produce magnetite in humans magnetite can be found in various parts of the brain including the frontal the parietal occipital and the temporal lobes brain stems cerebellum and the basal ganglia iron can be found in three forms in the brain magnetite hemoglobin and ferritin protein in areas of the brain related to motor functioning generally contain more iron magnetite can be found in the hippocampus the hippocampus is associated with information processing specifically learning and memory and every time a con builds he's always flexing that memory so when we go back and we wonder what it is that the Omex knew what's up with the headgear right however magnetite can have toxic effects due to its charge or magnetic nature and its involvement in oxidative stress or the production of free radicals research show, suggests that beta amyloid plaques and tau proteins associated with neurodegenerative disease frequently occur after oxidative stress and the buildup of iron all right some researchers also suggest that humans possess a magnetic sense proposing that this could allow certain people to use magnetoreception for navigation the role of the brain, the role of magnetite in the brain is still not well understood. And there has been a general lag in applying more modern interdisciplinary techniques to the study of biomagnetism. But if you come to this channel, we've been surfing the wave because we've been speaking frequency, vibration and energy since the beginning. All right. We've been building on this since the beginning. We've always been talking about your flow. That is your hawa. We're talking about the breath and the feather, right? We're talking an ancient love song. We're talking about harmony. We're talking about framer and shaper. We're talking about molding. We've been saying this since day one, my naga. And it's so, it feels so good to still be on this ether bus, coasting and floating with such a royal regal. Negro tribal flow the way you guys have been provided. So special Ahabs, we're just getting relaxed. Peace, peace as we pick up the flow. So like we said, special Ahab to the bro, trade of Wakanda. Here we have the ancient Omec incorporated magnetism in their statues and made use of magnetic anomalies. 
Yes, you heard that right. The ancient Olmec <laughs> incorporated magnetism in their statues and made use of magnetic anomalies. Knowledge of magnetism. Let's get rid of the hijack. Knowledge of magnetism in ancient Mesoamerica was more widespread than previously thought. A group of scientists mapped the magnetic properties of 11 Olmec statues and found that certain body parts like the navel, the forehead, and the cheeks of the human figure seemed to display magnetic anomalies. The researchers concluded that these magnetized spots were not randomly distributed and were deliberately induced by the ancients. So again, we ask what it is that the ancient ancestors knew. Because we read where magnetite is associated in the brain. You see what's going on? The hippocampus is associated with information processing, specifically learning and memory. Magnetite can be found in the hippocampus. What are the ancients telling you? I know what natural's been telling you since the get-go. And that is to remember. Just like Mufasa told Simba, remember. <laughs> Being able to watch that with my young one once again, you know what I mean? To rekindle that connection once again with my young con, to be able to bond with him in such an official, prominent energy is all one can ask for. Ahab to the real ones. That's where that Lion King reference came from because I've been watching it with my young one, my mini me. The earliest description of magnetism was made by the Greek philosopher Tiles of Miletus in the 6th century BC. Supposedly, but look, however, circumstantial evidence suggests that an ancient Mesoamerican civilization knew about it much earlier and even made practical use, making magnetism part of their construction centuries before the Greeks introduced it to the world. Come on, man, we back with these Greeks again, right? From the last drop, we were saying Greeks, not Creeks, right? Creeks, not Greeks, Greeks, not Creeks. Well, here it is that the Omec is predating the so-called Greeks and this magnetism. Because, again, we've always been in the old world flow. We're talking the mama of civilizations, the ama of civilizations. We're talking Framer and Shaper. <laughs> The phenomenon of magnetism has been known by mankind for more than 300 years. The fact is documented in references to naturally occurring magnetic mineral magnetite in clay tablets in ancient Mesopotamia as early as the second millennium BC. Less known, however, is the possible evidence for the knowledge of the magnetic properties of rocks by the peoples of pre-Columbian America. In fact, archaeologists have found in Olmec sites in Mexico many objects made of iron ore that may reveal an early acquaintance with magnetism. The Olmecs constituted the first complex culture that appeared in the Americas before 1000 BC on Mexico's east coast. Among these objects, a polished bar has been found that is magnetic dating from 1400 to 1000 BC, which led to the speculations that it may have been part of a magnetic compass 1000 years before the first Chinese compass was was made. All right. And shouts out to the bro, because what was up with the headgear? What were they concentrating? Experts studying the Omics have discovered magnetic, uh, magnetic anomalies present in the snout of an animal sculpture in Itzapa. Interestingly, 
<laughs> the statue's magnetic properties seem to have been induced deliberately during its manufacture thousands of years ago. So where did they find them, they said? Let's go back, right? It was in the area of the face. Certain body parts like the navel, the forehead, and the cheeks of the human fig of the human figures. All right. So they knew what they were implying. And I bet you this makes you look at an Omeg head a lot more different now that we're talking about magnetite. Now that we're talking about natural structures that your ancient ancestors knew about. And again, we're just talking crystals. We're just talking crystals. Now, who knows? Maybe after this joint, <laughs> I might be on, you know, my, my IG showing, you know, the Shabbata that new new. You know, we back to it. We back to it in the real way. In the real way. All right. It says one evidence that the Omex knew of the properties of magnetic ores was a discovery made in Etapa and a site corresponding to the late formative period of a carved stone turtle head meters that is magnetic with one of the magnetic poles coincident with the snout of the animal. All right. So the ancients knew just how powerful these crystals were and we're going to dig more into it as we move along right and again shouts out to the bro trader wakandan for such a beautiful flow you know mesoamerican sculptures reveal early knowledge of magnetism stone figures with magnetized with magnetized cheeks and navels suggest that the pre Mayan civilization of Monte Alto understood the attractive force. It says magnets are a mystery that has baffled science and philosophers for millennia, and researchers still don't fully understand the properties that give magnetic fields their potency. Ancient Greek legend held that a shepherd named Magnus first discovered the curious force when a stone pulled at his iron staff in an area of Greece then known as Magnesia. Whether or not Mag's, Mag, Magnus the shepherd actually existed, he wasn't the only ancient human to notice the funny characteristics of, a certain, of certain types of stone. The first culture to become aware mag, of magnetic material is a matter of open debate, but new evidence suggests ancient cultures in America had knowledge of magnetic forces long before the first pocket compasses. All right. And that's because we're talking about the old world. All right. We're digging on the old world. This is something that we have always been about. So what were the ancients telling us? <laughs> what were they telling us Shabbat we'll see peace peace alright so here we have a post that I threw up some time ago and the caption reads when you realize sound and magnetism is something our ancestors understood from the earliest of times you'll see just how in tune they really were with the nature around them Many scholars ponder just how the ancients built such structures without the use of modern tools. They knew what their science is just uncovering. All right. And let's let's take a look at it. Let's go. Oh, my bad. Hold on. <laughs> let's get that back.
So as you see, it's the sound that's making these stones levitate. So when you apply sound and magnetism, you get amazing wonders. Folks always want to know, how were the pyramids built? We're tapping into that. So again, I ask you what it is that you think these people really knew. What were they trying to tell us? But well, we're kind of getting a bit of it again here. Such a beautiful flow, right? Such a beautiful flow. So we're going to go ahead and continue. See what else that we got. Peace, peace. All right. So this is 13 weeks ago. The ancients already knew what their science is just uncovering. We're talking crystals in the brain, my naga. Hematite. All right, everything you need to know about hematite from healing properties to how to use it. All right, hematite is an iron based mineral that is actually chemically the same as common rust. According to crystal expert Yulia Van Doren of Goldie Rocks, it's originally a rusty red color, gets its Distinctive metallic gray sheen when polished and is found in Brazil, Canada, England, the U.S., Venezuela, and more. All right. Hematite's name literally means bloodstone as it comes from the Greek word for blood. Van Doren says adding it's long been revered by many cultures for protection. Roman and Native American warriors would paint themselves Blood red with powder hematite for protection in battle, she tells MPG. As crystal expert Heather Eskinois notes, this stone can sometimes be seen with red streaks running through its surface and is known for connecting the body to earth. Hematite was believed to make warriors invulnerable and give them courage and strength, she notes, adding that during the Paleolithic era, Early humans created cave paintings with the red pigment from ground up hematite. All right. So when you see these cave paintings, according to so said experts, <laughs> it is from the crystal being ground up, which has magnetic properties. Healing properties, <clears throat> grounding, like we got earlier, right? Of all its properties, hematite is probably most known as a grounding stone with strong associations to the root chakra. As Eskinoid tells MBG, hematite can help ground the body and spirit thanks to its connection to nature and Mother Earth. When you feel like a rug has been pulled out from under you, hematite can help you get back on your feet again. Alright? And when we're talking about the root, we're building on the Shekinah. 
we're talking that Dracon, right? All the way up. But from where? From the root. As you see, the root. Raise your Kundalini. See? From the base on up. You see the spirals? Shots out to the bro. Out to the top, right? Just like, as you can see, <laughs> so called pyramid. So, what is it exactly that the ancients knew? Right. Several studies show that the core physiological ferritin is composed of nanoparticles of ferrohydrate magnetite and mag magamite and hematite. Under some conditions, iron can accumulate and create particles. This process, biomineralization, influences property of cells and tissues and supports some of their biological functions. Physiochemical properties of the particles reflect conditions under biomineralization taking place. Under conditions prevailing in human body, the formation of an amorphous state or minute crystalline phase is expected. The deposits of iron oxidized in the human brain are well documented over the last decades. You see what I'm saying? So this stuff is deposited in the brain and the ancients knew, which is why I've been stuck on the headgear of these Omex. What's really popping off? What's really going on, Shabbata? Wow, such a beautiful flow. So how does it work? Kirsch Shavink thinks magnetite is the key. Receptor cells containing crystals of magnetite could register changes in magnetic fields and report this information to the brain. This is almost identical to what magnetotactic bacteria do. They have structures containing nanoscale magnetite crystals called magnetosomes. These essentially act as bi biological compasses which allow the bacteria to navigate <laughs> you know and when your man is in recon mode it, it's all flowing it's all connecting you know so i appreciate the charge up from the loved ones when we begin to you know build on such things you know they charge me up and I'm sure that I do the same. It's a lovely feeling. Are your eyes really open? The pineal gland or third eye is the most heavily targeted and poisoned gland in the human body, mainly due to its spiritual influence it has on the human awareness. A closed pineal gland means the mind can be easily deceived as it struggles to look beyond what is presented in front of it. An open pineal acts like a truth detector by being able to pick up on the subtle inconsistencies of lies or subliminal messages that may be used as a veil to conceal true intention. This is why you got to, you know, stay polished, right? Intuition is real. Vibes are real. Energy doesn't lie. Tune in. All right. And we were just building on the energy, frequency and vibration. All right getting your tune up and we're just tuning up all right 
moving forward thinking is electric knowing is magnetic meditation is the key that will open the door to your inner self wherein lies all the true power for material manifestation for as sound springs from the silences so does positive action come from inner knowing sound does come from silence so positive action comes from knowing knowing is magnetic so what are the ancients telling you once again shabata if knowing is magnetic are you starting to overstand the headgear is it becoming a bit more clear now? Is it becoming pure water? I hope so. Because this is just a beautiful flow. It's another beautiful flow. <laughs> All right. Knowing is magnetic, so we're talking hematite, we're talking magnetite, we're still talking crystals for the crystallized ones. That is the Dracons above the nine. Ahab to the dragon sponsors. Peace, peace to the real ones. Let's continue. So, you know, they know that melanin is not an element, which is why they refer to it as melanin. And at its source, it actually contains carbon, which is stardust. All right. <laughs> and stardust is just that stuff that falls off so-called meteors, a.k.a. cometas. We're just talking the same shit we were talking from the beginning. But here's a little something, something we shared on the IG some time ago. And it's going to explain just how melanin is used in computer chips you see what i'm saying crystallizations it's all the same wave we'll see as we continue to break it down peace peace melanin pigment right right it's so unbelievable george they use it in computer chips now because it has an ability to transduce electrical energy can you imagine this it has this incredible ability to hold on to and transduce and manipulate electrons, electronic energy and photons, photonic energy. It's a fascinating molecule. Now, <laughs> when we're talking about melanin, we're, we're, we're talking about... Melanin pigment, right? Right. It's so unbelievable, George. They use it in computer chips now because it has an ability to transduce electrical energy. Can you imagine this? It has this incredible ability to hold on to and transduce and manipulate electrons, electronic energy and photons, photonic energy. It's a fascinating molecule. All right. <laughs> when we're digging on these things, how can we not involve the melanin rich? The carbon rich one. And to see it being interfaced with mechanics, what's going on? What's really going on? Right? But it is the supply that will be the spark of the so-called revolutionizing future. You just got to stay tapped in to see how and to keep what's essentially chosen for you to remain just that. Peace to the real ones. All right. So here we have another post. 37 kilograms of Mika used today in electronics found in the ancient city of Teotihuacan. Sorry. <laughs> All right. And again, we're asking what it is that the ancients knew. You see it coming together so much more clearly right about now, right, Shabata? We're just speaking on the Ethiopians. All right. And 
in case you don't know what Mika is, we're going to go ahead and get into it in a bit. More than 37 kilograms of Mika have been found in Teotihuacan. Mika was found in the form of plates, triangles, trapezoidal figures, rectangles, squares, and circles, as well as in small fragments and dust. Talking that stardust. Mika, right? Are a group of minerals whose outstanding physical characteristic is that individual Mika crystals can easily be split into extremely thin elastic so on and so on all right we're talking crystals all right crystals so these pyramids these structures that the Omex actually were building were of crystals so again, we see the headgear, the biomineralization of magnetite in the human brain. We're talking about the pineal gland having magnet magnetical or magneto magneto sensitivity. Excuse me, magneto sensitivity. <laughs> All right, crystalline structures. All right. <clears throat> The crystal structure of Mika is described, meaning that it is composed of parallel TOT layers weakly bonded to each other by cations. All right. Crystals. The tetrahedral sheets. All right. Octahedral sheets. We're talking platonic solids. Shout out to the Templar. He's just getting a little bit mathematical. You know what I'm saying? Hexagonal. All right. Peep the flow. I'll be talking tetrahedral and octahedral for a reason, my nigga. <laughs> you know, we, we've been down, we've been on. We've been on it. Let's get it. Crystalline structures. You see what's happening? So the ancients knew something about these crystals and how they apply to the body. Not just to the body, but to also sound. Not just the sound, but to also resonance, which was able to store the frequencies and vibrations. All right. A lot of power within these stones. And they were able to harness this energy and make it home. And we just getting back to the root of it all. That's what we're here to do. Shout around to the real ones. We shall continue. All right. The quartz crystal is neither a solid nor a liquid. It vibrates a 686,000 pulse per millisecond. Its continuum moves faster than light. Its vibration is the axis of the universe. All right. Because we're talking about elements. All right. It is neither solid nor liquid. This is a vibration. Crystals are an extension of sound. Resonance. That has just been mineralized. All right. So these crystals go a lot further than one thing. And this is what the ancestors were trying to tell us. All of their energy usage and storage was done with the natural minerals. Because we're talking about connectivity. We're talking about resonance. We're just talking about building. 
that moment you realize you're just a piece of data carrying information as you move through a circuit system that has been designed to siphon your spiritual energy. Here we have the microcosm of a motherboard, right? And here you have the macrocosm of a cityscape. This is a city from above, and this is a motherboard. <laughs> So in the bigger scale of things, yeah, you're just a piece of data, <laughs> right? We're all just pieces of data. All right. We're just surfing the wave. Peace, peace to the real ones. And we're going to go ahead and get it to another drop so let's do that peace peace have their own version of DNA this is highly interesting highly interesting <laughs> because here they're telling us where the correlation is right it's in the DNA it's in the structure it's in the code it is in the code that was a beautiful flow we'll bring it back one time if we can I don't know if we can. Can we? Can we bring it back? No, I guess not. I guess they don't allow us to do it. We shall continue then. Uh, the, the blueprint of our DNA and the elixir. Okay? So, these two are able to communicate through our orbital, orbit, orbital areas, which is the eye area, but also the fontanelle, that little tiny space that is so soft as a baby, but that solidifies as we become adults is still the softest part of the brain on the on this on the cerebral cortex thus making it as a perfect conduit for the interaction of these electromagnetic waves which have with with with, with through the pack the, the power of the magnetite and allowing the, the neuromagnetic communication between all of these crystals Guys, this is called transcranial magnetic stimulation. Okay, so uh, a small, a small enzyme. Okay, um, it is the main crystal that serves as a neurological communicator between the brain and these crystals that we all have in the brain. So the magnetite. 
is so strong that can actually connect us to the earth of the, the, the earth core okay and to its electromagnetic field through the crystals in our brain and the crystals in the earth, in the course of earth guys the easiest way to do it is to vibration whether you are om, whether you're oming or whether you're humming mm, feel the vibration right here this vibration will activate all of the crystals in your brain in your brain um using it as a conduit of communication not just with the internal energy but also with the external energy of such electromagnetic fields guys so being that this magnetite works as a tiny little antenna that can communicate between here and there you know and can make this cohesive um alignment through these tiny crystals um we are tapping into what is called the geometrical fields of each stone okay and of each crystal because each crystal has a unique dna just like we do okay it's called a stone blueprint guys and this stone blueprint it is it is just like the dna on the, the blueprint of our dna in the elixir okay so these two are able to communicate through our orbital orbit, orbital areas, which is the eye area, but also the fontanelle, that little tiny space that is so soft as a baby, but that solidifies as we become adults. It's still the softest part of the brain on the on this on the cerebral cortex, thus making it as a perfect conduit for the interaction of these electromagnetic waves. And that's maybe what they're highlighting, the Omex, right? With this headgear. <laughs> one has to wonder. One needs to know. Peace, peace. I hope you guys are enjoying it right on this Eat the Bus. We shall continue. Hey, uh, so here we have that the power of words and magic, right? Words are not just elements of speech or writing because they can be used to strengthen the effects of magic. When spoken out loud, words transform into frequencies and vibrations that can be used to direct energy. This is one of the first steps to creating real magic. Most people laugh at the idea of magic being real, but if only they knew what magic really is and how magic is being used to control them, they would not be laughing. Remember. Magic is the art of directing and controlling energy using natural forces, i.e. as in sound and thought to produce a desired effect. In other words, magic is the art of directing and controlling energy. What most of us do not understand about the reality of Earth is that we live in a world dominated by magic. Until you learn how magic works and how it is being used to control you, you would never know how the world really works. And this is just, you know, from the beginning when we were digging on, you know, uh, this meteor man falling. And it was through the power of song that he and others like him came into creation. All right. So we're just highlighting different reasons and different points to you know that indicate that we're all in the same spiral we're just spiraling nine peace out here we have veins carry energy same way lightning carries electricity all right so it's always a running flow it's always a running water and you are stirring that natural energy, that natural force. It is within you because we are natural by law. Halahua, as we surf the wave. And we're going to continue. The man's name was Benjamin Banneker. He knew melody. 
He said, you don't understand it, but I'm going to show you how this thing works. These are the cycles of your kidneys. This is the cycle of your pancreas. And he made them into wheels. And they all work, but they're synchronized by one rhythmicity, which they call melanin. That's where the wheel clock comes from. Every invention comes from your body. To know your body is to know everything. The camera comes from your eyes. The speaker comes from your ear. A nuclear reactor comes from your liver. A car motor duplicates your digestive system. Everything comes from your body. Crystals that they use in computers were learned from studying melanin crystals. That's where they got computer chips from. Everything comes from your body. If you want to know how to put something together, study the body. Computer chips duplicate melanin crystals. That's how they got it. No problem. You want us to study the man's name? <laughs> Computer chips duplicate melanin crystals. I mean, the water and the flow and the build has just been too, too man. I mean, after this point, it's just a piece of art, right? It's just be, it just becomes a piece of art at this point. It's a beautiful flow, but the ancients knew, and I'm starting to understand. I'm starting to see it. I'm starting to see what this headgear is about. It's becoming crystal clear. Let's continue the flow. Hey, huh? So I'm doing the recon, and I saw something that was truly profound. Right? I mean, the geometry behind this example is a beautiful one. All right, and check out the base of the pyramid being literally 432. We cannot make this up. Pyramid side area equals 432. 432 divided by pi. Look at the degrees on this. <laughs> Do you see what I see? <laughs> I mean, just let it sit in. Just let it sit in. Just let it sit in. We just gonna sit here and let this sit in. Because it's a flow, man. You know, you can't get here by accident. So if you're here right now, Shabbat I know it was not an accident. You had to understand and understand that you answered a call. You're responding to a call lane. And this is one of them. It's a marvelous flow. Such a marvelous flow. It almost brings tears to my eyes. <laughs> Nah, I'm, I'm playing, but yeah, you know, this is what we do it for. This is what we live for. We we do it for these moments of crystal clarity. To see the dimensions. To look beyond the narrative. So I hope your key is on point and it's on charge and you're pushing this energy through the top to receive more as you continue to breathe Halahawa. it's just another beautiful flow that we got peace to the real ones let's go so here we have the character known as Adar from the series Power of Rings and this scene right here stood out to me significantly because it's a moment where he's having a realization of the beauty of the sun and he's looking at it in a poetic way because he's realizing that <laughs> his intent is to actually block it out he wants to block out 
the son. To supply him and his children, which are the orcs. The orcs are his children. Right? And, you know, as we always talk about the different kinds of men, the different types, it has been introduced into this drop as well. So the stream is mean, my nigga. But the team is to eat the squad. And we are out of here. <laughs> so, as you can see, his children, the orc, they have to shield themselves from the sun because that light touches their skin and it burns, similar to vampires or similar to those that need sun tanning lotion. Right? So, Adar being the one of the first ones to lead to the grafting of the orc as you can see right the orcs come from the elves as they are a grafting of what an elf used to be into this And he's one of the first ones to lend his DNA to the creation of such beings. Showing exactly what we've been saying this entire time. There is no, no indication that his children will reproduce sexually. This is about genetic splicing. The introduction of a new race from something that previously existed in harmony with nature. It is a corruption. And now this is what we're digging on. <laughs> and like I said, when it all comes together, it feels so good just to be able to see it. Because we've been talking vibration and frequency from the beginning we've been speaking frequency and vibration from the beginning because in the beginning was the word so his intention is to blot out the sun he's trying to block out the sun and i wonder why i wonder why since the sunlight burns the skin of these orcs which have to shield themselves from the sun and they're the natural enemies of the people of Middle Earth. And it was amazing because he said that they don't like to be called orcs. They like to be called Uruks. And I'm pretty sure you're wondering, what is that, right? Well, when I heard the term, it took me somewhere else. And I thought, wait a minute. <clears throat> this can't be so. But sure enough, it was. The orcs, right? History has it that they were elves once taken by the dark powers, tortured and mutilated. A terrible, ruined form of life. Saruman orcs were first created from elves under torture and dark sorcery. Their creation served as an insult to the children of whatever that would be. But before the first age, Mel before the first age, Melkor was the first to learn of the awakening of the elves, and he soon began sending evil, evil spirits among the elves. All right. So. <laughs> These elves, after being tormented, became the orcs. All right. And that's how the orcs came to be. So it's crazy how they show the graphing and the proof thereof. The same way we've been saying in these drops, 
the whole time. It's an amazing flow. It's an amazing flow. So this was the term that Adar, father of the orcs, referred to him at, himself as, which was crazy to me. Because as you see, it says for the fictional location in the works of J.R.R. Tolkien, see Eric or Erek, Middle Earth. All right. But this is an ancient city of Sumer. And we all know that the Sumers or the Sumerians look like these folks. <laughs> so, you know, what's really going on in this drive? What's really going on in this drop? You know? <clears throat> and as we surf the wave, why are they giving you... I mean, look at, look at the looks of it, right? Off top, what does this look like to you? They're saying white temple. I'm thinking pyramid. All right? Is it possible that they're referring to themselves being created in the so-called Middle East? As one would say, Middle Earth, Middle East. Are we still talking giant lemurs? Are we still talking Bigfoot with lemur DNA? <laughs> I mean, the ancient Sumerians have tablets suggesting that beings were crafted and grafted from the gods. I just find it interesting how Adar says he and his children like to be referred as Uruk. And I was like, wait a minute, I can't I can't be hearing that right. And they're saying that it's actually a biblical city. All right. Identify Uruk as Erek or Eric. It's the same pronunciation when you identify the two. All right. Same vibration, same frequency. So it's interesting to find some Middle Eastern drop when it comes to the creation of these orcs. Very interesting. All right. Very interesting. So we're going to go ahead and get his next one as we ride out. Appreciate everyone that's been tapped in. Let's continue this beautiful flow that we've been able to build so far. Hey, huh?
of Egypt, uh, Commission glyphs on Mayan temples. I've yet to see a picture of them, but there's supposedly are Commission glyphs somewhere in Mayan temples that's yet to be found. But we know P, who was married to a Mexican lady named Myra, she was of Mayan blood. I was back in that same chamber just before talking about Sate. She kind of grabbed that, Stephen, come here, I have to show you something. What? She said this. So he's saying that they have evidence of Mayan influence, whatever we want to say, over in Kemet, aka Egypt, right? And we were saying how, as the untouchedness people, we were all over the plain, from one coast to the next, all right? Just like there are blades of grass, we we covered the earth in the same way. But not just that, we were taking our understanding, especially that of magnetism, energy, and vibration as far as frequency. And we used that information to help develop other areas on Earth. We set up mystery schools and we taught. And we introduced this power of the creator to, to everyone. Which is why everyone had to come back to the code in order to access it. And eventually everyone ended up turning their backs on that code. But it still had a source. And that source, that foundation is what we refer to as the lands of America today. These are our ancient ancestors. And as you can see, they were one and the same with each other as far as putting themselves on each other's walls. <laughs> hey, uh... This is a Mayan headdress. Sure, this, is like not, this is not Native Commission. Yep. It's Quetzal Feathers. It looks like... Here's the, the priest. He's having himself disguised as a Mayan. So maybe there was a contact. And we know the other one goes back at least 3,300 years. So... This is some more evidence we believe that there was contact between the Mayans and the Commissions. And when I sent this uh, thing that I spoke about and showed to Hunbot's men, he said it was it was clear in their tradition, so with Dal Alejandro, that the Mayans had come here and the Commissions had come there. So we've heard rumors for years of Egypt, uh, Commission glyphs on Mayan temples. I've yet to see a picture of them, but there supposedly are Commission glyphs somewhere in Mayan temples that's yet to be found. But we... So like we've been saying, <laughs> and as we're going to continue to say, it's always been about frequency. It's always been about vibration. It's always been about vibration. It's always been about frequency. And it's good to see that materialize in drops like this. It feels good to see that what we talk about is actually being projected out there. It's not just a figment of imagination. This is a tangible reality. This is what drives us, and I hope it's the same thing that drives you, Shabbatah, because you're tuning in and you're watching for a reason. And we appreciate you for tapping in and choosing up with the Creator and us as you do so. So Aha, Shalom to the real ones. Till next